Hey guys, it's Dantelion, and today, well, today I'm going to show you how to get a corrupted moose mount. So to get this mount, you'll have to complete the glory of the Legion Raider achievement. The achievement itself isn't that hard to get, but there are just a couple of tedious things about it. One of these tedious things, or actually a pain in the ass, is um, an achievement called Fruit of All Evil. Now, this achievement requires you to go to the Nighthold and move to the Botanist with 10 people. Now, the hardest thing about it is actually getting the 10 people. So yeah, I don't get why Blizzard wouldn't just remove it as a requirement from the Glory of the Legion Raider achievement itself. Actually, I don't get why Blizzard would still keep these kind of achievements in any of these Glory of the Raider achievements at all. Like, I get it if they would keep it in a current expansion, but we are just talking about achievements that are like from years ago. So, well, Blizzard, if you ever are watching this, please make it so it's no longer a requirement for any of these glory of the radar achievements. Plus, to be honest, there are not even 10 people in Ouroboros anymore. Anyway, guys, let's just get started with the achievements. Okay, guys, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to move to the Emerald Nightmare and we are going to start with Buggy Fight. Uh, this achievement isn't that hard to do, however I suggest you come here with an extra person and I also suggest you place this on normal because otherwise you will just make it yourself harder. Now if you want to solo this you can do that, you just need some self sustain because the boss is going to enrage but um, just keep in mind that it might take 45 minutes if you want to solo this. Now what you are going to do for this achievement is you are going to engage the boss and you are just going to wait till she drains her entire energy bar to zero. Whenever she reaches zero, she will start laying on the ground and you will see that she's going to cast Heart of the Swarm. Now the entire room will fill up with bugs and halfway through her cast of Heart of the Swarm, there will be these glow bugs, these red glowy bugs spawning around the edge of the room. Now whenever you've clicked on it, it will start to cast Squish. You need to squish 15 of these bugs before you are going to kill the boss. But here's the thing. Heart of the Swarm doesn't last forever, and she only spawns around 4 to 5 of these red glowy bugs each phase. So what I recommend is for you to have one person sit on the left side of the room and one person on the right side. That way it will make it a lot easier to click on more bugs than if you are all stacked up. So to keep track of how many bugs you've squished, you can do it just without an add-on, but I suggest you use Instance Achievement Tracker. It's basically an add-on which I use for a lot of achievements because it's just so handy, like it tracks everything for any achievement. Now, whenever you've squished 15, all you gotta do is kill the boss. The next achievement that we are going to do is called Scare Bear. Now, for this achievement, all you gotta do is kill all the trash in front of Tur and basically just release him. Keep killing all the trash until you reach the boss and just nuke Ursoc. Once you do that, you will see your achievement pop up. Now we are going to do an achievement called Imagine Dragons World Tour. This achievement is pretty easy to do. However, I suggest you come here with another person because that will make things a lot easier. Now, the way this works is you want to have one person tank the boss and have the other person collect all four of these essences that you can get in all four of these portals. You are going to enter a portal and there will be these essences flying around. Just run through it and whenever you do that you get a buff. Whenever you have that buff you can leave the portal and go to the other portal. You want to do that four times till you have four different buffs. Whenever you have four different buffs you want to taunt the boss and have the other person do the same thing. Whenever you both have all the buffs you can kill the boss and that's basically it. Now you're seeing me here playing on my 120 character. That's because I got this footage in BFA and I'm just too lazy to do it again. But the tactics still stay the same and it's still as easy as it was back then. Next up is an achievement called Took the Red Eye Down. Now all you gotta do for this one is have 20 blobs explode within 10 seconds underneath the eye of Ilganoth. Now, it's very easy to do. All you are going to do is just keep killing tentacles until you have 20 of these blobs following you. And whenever you do, just nuke them down within 10 seconds underneath the eye. Alright guys, so the next achievement that we are going to do is called Webbing Crashers. Now for this achievement, I recommend you come here with two people because that will make things a lot easier. And don't forget to have some self-sustain because you might actually die in this fight. Now... What you want to do before you are going to engage the boss is just start marking seven different eggs. Now, the way this achievement works 
is that you have to destroy seven of these pulsing eggs and after that you gotta kill the boss now keep in mind you have to do that while the boss is attacking you right so don't destroy these eggs before you're engaging the boss because otherwise your achievement has failed. So after marking these eggs, one person can start pulling the boss and just keep aggro on it while the other person is flying around destroying these eggs. I was first destroying these three eggs that were just on the middle platform because they were just easy to get by. Now after that, I was waiting till the boss was going into his bird face. And whenever he goes into his bird face, he will leave these feathers on the ground. Now, whenever you walk through a feather, you will be able to start flying. So whenever you press your spacebar, you can fly. Now, as a demon hunter, you don't really need it, but just to be safe, use it. <laughs> Except for the two last eggs, but I'll just explain that whenever we get there. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to take the two left eggs that are on the lower platform. You want to go back to the platform where you start the boss fight. And whenever you look down there, you will see another pulsing egg. As a demon hunter, you can just jump on the egg, destroy it. And whenever you look in the distance, you will see another egg there. Now, as a demon hunter, you can just use your dash twice and destroy it. Now, once you've destroyed all seven of these eggs, the other person that's tanking the boss can just nuke it and you will have your achievement. Now, whenever you jump down, the boss might actually start like pulling you back up. Just jump down again, have your friend take aggro again, and it shouldn't be a problem at all. So to get the next achievement, which is called use the force sis, <laughs> all you're going to do is just nuke down scenarios and that's all you got to do. All right, guys. So now we are going to do the last achievement in the Emerald Nightmare. Now for this achievement, you want to be a demon hunter or a warlock. So what you have to do to get this achievement is you have to kill three of these invisible ads that are running around in the darkness while fighting the boss. So if you want to do this, you will need a demon hunter or a warlock because they can see invisible units. So the way I did this was before I engaged the boss, I made a pre-made group so I could place down these markers. I recommend you doing the same thing. Well, once you've placed down the markers, you want to engage the boss and immediately go towards the yellow marker. So the first ad that you want to start revealing always spawns at the yellow marker. So just go there, dash into the darkness, use your spectral sight, and taunt the ad. Now, the way I did that to make it a little bit easier was by having a macro. And well, this macro was just a simple slash target slash cast torment macro. I'll have it in the comment section below. If you are a demon hunter, you can use it. Once you've taunted the ad, you want to kill it. And after that, you want to start moving towards the moon marker. Now, what you're going to do here is just wait till your spectral sight is off cooldown. And you just want to start DPSing the boss down to around 60 to 58% HP. Dash into the darkness, use your spectral sight and your macro and just kill the ad. Now after that, you want to move towards the red marker. And once you are there, you want to wait again till your spectral sight is off cooldown. And you want to start DPSing the boss to around 28% HP. And dash into the darkness, use your spectral sight, and just taunt the last ad that you need. After you've killed the third ad, you can start killing the boss and you have your achievement. Now this requires a couple of attempts because, well, I didn't do it in the first try. Um, sometimes whenever you get the boss to around 25% HP instead of 30%, the ad will be somewhere else. So you just really got to keep in mind what percentage HP the boss is. And otherwise the ad will be, for example, at the purple marker instead of the red marker. So yeah. Just give it a couple of attempts, keep trying, and eventually you will have this achievement. Okay, guys, so next up, we are going to the Nighthold. So what we are going to do there first is an achievement called Cage Rematch. Now, all you want to do here is just walk over towards the boss, stand on top of him, and just nuke him. That's it. For the achievement called Grand Opening, you want to set it to Heroic, and you want to be here with two people. Now, preferably, you want to have a hunter because that pet can just tank the boss and that way you won't die. Because if you don't have a pet, then you are probably going to die here right now. <laughs> so make sure you have a pet class and have someone else with you. All you're going to do is just wait for time bomb. Whenever you have a time bomb debuff, you want to move to a blue circle. And whenever it expires, it will make a pillar of light. You need eight pillars of light to get this achievement. So what you're going to do is you are just going to stand still on a blue circle and you are going to wait for the time bomb debuff while your pet is tanking the boss. What's going to happen is whenever that debuff is going to expire, it will leave a pillar of light on one of these circles where you are standing and you just want to move to the next circle. Now you are going to do that until you see eight pillars of light. Now if you are with two people, you will basically just get two pillars of light each face. So that will make things a lot easier. Now. 
Another thing is, whenever the boss is going to cast Power Overwhelming, just kill the waning Time Particle and the Fragmented Time Particle. What you can do then is pick up the Temporal Rift and just use it on the boss. That way he's going to continue his fight, otherwise he will be stuck in the same phase. So what you are going to do basically is just standing in these blue circles, waiting for a Pillar of Light to spawn and just moving to another circle. You are going to do that until you have 8 Pillars of Light and then you are going to kill the boss and that's all you gotta do. Luton Free is the next achievement that we are going to do and basically for this one just nuke down the boss. Alright guys, so for the next achievement, which is called a change in scenery, you gotta kill Spellblade Alluriel in three different locations. So she has to die in the Shaldrite Terrace, which is right in front of the Botanist, Astromancer's Rise, that's the room underneath Star Augur, and then you also have the Shattered Walkway, which is basically on the bridge to Croesus. Now the easiest way to track this is just by tracking the achievement itself, because whenever it turns white, that means that you are in the right place. So what you want to do basically is just have her die on normal in the Shaldrise Terrace. And whenever you have done that, you can walk out, place it back on Heroic and just kill her in the Astromancer's Rise, right? After you've done that, yeah, you can just place it on Mythic and do the same thing, but this time in the Shattered Walkway and you will still have your achievement in one week. So that's basically it for this achievement. Next up is the achievement called Elementalry. Now, all you gotta do for this achievement is pull a nether elemental, which is not inside the boss room, so you gotta be outside of the boss room. And what I'm showing here is that you can go to the left side, and there will be this nether elemental, which is basically being imprisoned. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to kill the guards, and eventually this elemental will start getting hostile. Drag it towards the boss. Whenever you are in the boss room, just lower the boss's life to around 20%. And eventually you will see this elemental transform in a well-traveled nether elemental. Whenever that happens, kill the ad, and after that kill the boss and you will have your achievement. Alright guys, so now we are going to do the achievement which requires 10 people. Um, basically the hardest part about this achievement is finding 10 people. Now once you've gathered 10 people to do this with, all you are going to do is find fruit which is laying in the garden where the botanist is sitting in, have all 10 people click on the fruit, get a debuff and then nuke the boss. Once you've done that you will get your achievement. Not for you is the next achievement that we are going to do. Now for this achievement all you are going to do is nuke down Tychondrius and that's all there is to it. Next up is Burning Bridges. Now, all you're going to do for this achievement is damage Croesus to around 25% HP. And whenever you've done that, you can run to the end of the bridge and wait. While you're waiting, the boss is going to spawn some elementals and they will start applying a dot on you. Now, whenever this dot is going to reach 40, it might actually start hurting. So it might be smart to have some self-sustain. To get this achievement, the boss has to kill 15 of these fire elementals by having them fall in the water whenever he breaks the bridge. So you're just going to wait till 15 of these elementals fall in the water. Whenever that happens, you can kill the boss. Now, if you want to know how many he has killed already, just use instance achievement tracker or just shift click the achievement itself and it will turn white whenever the boss has killed 15 of these fire elementals. All right, guys, so now we only need two more achievements to get them out. Now, the next achievement that we are going to do is called Infinitesimal. Before you are going to attempt this achievement, make sure you have an infinite well bling. If you don't have one, you can get them in the caverns of time. You can just catch them and then come back and do this achievement. So what you want to do is summon your infinite well bling, pull the boss and just wait a few seconds. So after a while, there will be these expedient elemental and recursive elemental spawning. What you're going to do is you're going to kill those both and you are just going to run through the puddles that they leave behind whenever you kill them with your infinite whelpling. Whenever you do that and you walk through both these puddles, your infinite whelpling will start like evolving and it will become hostile. Kill your infinite whelpling. Yeah, I know, you gotta kill your own pet. And once you've done that, just kill the boss and you will have your achievement. Okay guys, so now we are going to do the last achievement, which is called I've Got My Eyes On You. Now, this achievement is very easy to do. All you're going to do is track the achievement or use instance achievement tracker. And basically what you want to do is start the fight and you're going to hit Gul'dan a couple of times. Eventually you will start going into his next phase and he will start spawning these eyes of Gul'dan. Now what you want to do is stand in the middle and stay in the middle because he's going to also try to push you off the platform. So keep that in mind. Now whenever he's going to spawn these eyes, you want to make sure that you are also standing in the middle because that will make sure that these eyes won't be spread around the room too much. Whenever you have around 16 eyes, you can just nuke them down 
within three seconds so make sure you have some aoe ability that's able to nuke them down instantly and after that you can kill the boss and you will have your achievement so guys that's basically how you get your glory of the legion raider achievement it's pretty easy some of these achievements are kind of tedious but if you just put in a little effort you will have this achievement in no time now if you like this video and if it was helpful at all don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe if you got any questions or suggestions or anything just leave it in the comment section below and well guys i hope you have a great day and i'll see you in the next video bye